Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now May 28th of 2023. I hope you're all having an amazing weekend so far. And given that there's a lot of things to look forward to when it comes to the Star Wars franchise, including the Ahsoka Tano series, which by the way, is the first Star Wars project under Disney's wing, where Kathleen Kennedy had no creative involvement at all whatsoever. It's all Dave Filoni driven with the help of Jon Favreau, as well as Timothy Zahn advising the series. So it's all the more reason, I believe, to really be a little bit excited for this one going in and really looking forward to what comes next after that. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Zero One. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And without further ado, let's get right into the subject. Now, what's interesting about Everything related to the Disney executives right now and Bob Iger, unfortunately they still are in that current shakeup with how they are going to handle Marvel and Star Wars on different fronts, different formats, so to speak, when it comes to movies, TVs, TV shows, etc. We know that Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger are like going head to head where Bob Iger wants a movie every single year, Kathleen Kennedy wants a movie every two to three years, so to speak. And given that she is losing a lot of power, that's not looking likely either. So what's interesting about this though, is exactly what Bob Iger had to say about John and Dave's plan to essentially reset the Skywalker saga and its impact on the sequel trilogy and how much of an impact it's gonna have on the perception coming from the audience and how they view the Star Wars franchise, all right? So of course, on top of this, with Disney and Lucasfilm now making big moves to course correct the franchise, recently Bob Iger was able to, to actually discuss more about John and Dave's plans on resetting the Skywalker saga in a powerful way. Now Bob Iger went on to deliver this to the fandom. We have great talented figures working with us, those like John and Dave who are finding their right techniques to essentially reset and rearrange elements of the Skywalker saga that's going to give them these big opportunities to grab those old stories from what fans like to call the expanded universe. We had this in mind years ago, and we were thinking two steps ahead, which is why we have been putting out those Legends Essentials books to get fans caught up with the rest of the EU. We are now taking the fans very seriously and are finding the right tools to adapt those popular Legends characters. So, one thing I want to take away from what Bob Iger is saying here real quick before I get to the next thing he says is, that's a very interesting strategy that he just put out there. He's saying those Legends Essentials books that have been going on store shelves are all a part of this plan to get fans caught up with the Legends universe because John and Dave are going to be rearranging the saga and essentially resetting it and how it's going to have a big impact on the sequels and a lot of those Legends Essentials books and those stories are going to be told in the upcoming canon be it shows or movies, whatever it may be, even some of the upcoming books and comics. Now, the thing about Bob Iger is that I've said this many times and I'll continue to say it today. I remain a very big skeptic of him. Um, I really am still, you know, but I got to give him a lot of credit for allowing John and Dave to do the greatest work of all time by really just trying to course correct the franchise and getting a chance to do it. And really, at the end of the day, the thing that I really do have the biggest critique over Bob Iger was the mishandling of the Galactic Star Cruiser Star Wars Hotel. That became a big failure. By the way, that is closing this September. It is official. It's actually happening. So, sorry to say if you guys were looking forward to that, but I don't know anybody who would really want to pour that much money into something that's not really Star Wars. But, you know... To each his own, I guess. Now, the next thing that I do want to go over here real quick is exactly what Bob Iger goes on to elaborate further because it actually has a lot more to do with their game plan or their master plan, if you will, to really restructure the franchise and bring in a lot of fan favorite elements from the 1990s. Now, he goes on to state, we know going in that this was going to impact the sequel movies, so we are leaving it up to John and Dave on rearranging that lore and how everything within the Skywalker saga is going to have some historic elements changed around. 
Now, separate from what Bob Iger stated, this all alludes to plans for John and Dave to use the World Between Worlds heavily in Ahsoka Season 2 that is slated for a 2025 release date window that is going to change the course of history and essentially with the lore and the sequel movies. Filoni and Favreau's vision is to mix together both Legends characters with the live-action Rebels and Clone Wars characters like Ahsoka and others like Ezra and Thrawn. With it, of course, having a lot of return of Luke and his adventures as a big focus again. Now, many elements of the sequels are also set to get retconned and reset with the upcoming books and novels that John and Dave are supervising from specific authors. Now, the thing that really shocks me the most about all of this is the fact that we know that there's a lot of things going on between the Disney executives and Kathleen Kennedy and how... Basically, they want nothing to do with her anymore. They are really heavily relying on the performance of Indiana Jones 5, The Dial of Destiny, on whether or not she's going to stay at Lucasfilm, and so far it's not looking good for Indy 5, to say the least, but it's just a matter of what does Disney consider bad statistics when it comes to box office results and poor fan reception? What do they consider bad, really, is what I'm very much worried about you know because they always have this altered sense of reality on what's good and bad when it comes to these movies and at the end of the day this is a good move i think this whole plan on the legends essentials books coming out and basically all of the resets that are planned by john and dave that's going to canonize a lot of legends characters and how they are going to have a big impact on the sequel movies that speaks volumes to me, but the other thing that I do want to point out here that's very interesting has a lot to do with John and Dave's outlook on the current state of the fandom. They are very well aware that the fans remain divided to this day over two main reasons. The handling, or the mishandling, of the sequel trilogy, and what happened to Gina Carano getting fired and Cara Dune getting written out of season 3 of Mando. They are very well aware that the division has a lot to do with that, and that's what they're looking to remedy right now. That's their overall plan, is to bring that problematic situation into, of course, a remedy, where they can actually get the fans back together again, where they're going to have positive fan reception instead of negative, and... At the end of the day, too, let's not remember, let's not forget about this. They also have a very big vision, so to speak, to put together this dream team that is already working along the ways very well. That's going to bring on, of course, James Cameron, George Lucas. Um, you also have people like Matt Reeves, the Russo brothers coming, Timothy Zahn, who's going to be advising a lot of things onwards. So you have a lot of these great creators jumping on board over at Lucasfilm, working together with John and Dave and how that's going to be a very big movement. So anyways, guys, drop a comment below, fill me in below what you guys have to say about all of this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.